Welcome to this example Solid Mastermind training video for Solid Edge with Synchronous Technology. Solid Mastermind is the complete online resource for all of your Solid Edge training needs and support questions. In the next few minutes you will see some short examples of the Solid Edge ST2 update training material. The complete series of training material is available to members of Solid Mastermind. This preview is part of the synchronous sheet metal training and covers the use of the louver command. All the deformed features reside in the dimple drop down as shown. We'll start by selecting the louver command. This causes the quick bar to appear and a ghosted representation of a louver will be attached to the cursor. The size of the louver will be the same as the last one that was used. If the command is being run for the first time, the values will be 100 for the length. 20 for the depth and 5 for the height. Hitting the options button in the quick bar allows the values to be modified as well as setting other options such as the louver type, whether rounding should be included, or whether an offset should be applied to the feature origin. We'll be discussing feature origins later. For now we'll change the values as shown. This dialog also allows the parameters of different louvers to be saved for future reuse in the same way as holes. Simply type a name in the Save Settings field and hit the Save button. As the louver is then dragged over faces in the model, it will snap onto them and align with one of the edges on the face. This edge will be highlighted in green. At this stage, hitting either the N or the B key on the keyboard will select the next or previous edge to align the louver with. Also selecting the P key will align it with one of the global axes in the part. We can then simply click to place the louver in the desired location. This will create a louver feature in the Pathfinder. Selecting the louver will reveal both an edit definition handle and the 2D steering wheel. Selecting the edit definition handle will display its parameters so that it can be changed if desired. Selecting the Options button in the Quick Bar will allow the louver type and the rounding to be adjusted. The steering wheel allows the location of the louver to be changed via a synchronous move. Selecting the Torus will rotate the louver. Selecting either the primary or secondary axis will move it in the direction of that axis. Selecting the plane will allow the louver to be moved freely on the face. Remember, selecting either the primary or secondary bearing at the end of the axes will allow the steering wheel to be rotated and the direction of the axes changed. Also remember that holding down control and selecting an axis will copy the louver. For now, we'll undo these changes. Of course, the geometry for the louver can also be positioned accurately using any PMI dimensions as shown. Louvers also have a feature origin associated with them to define the punch point. To display the feature origin, we can select the louver, then right click and choose the Display Feature Origin command from the context menu. We can dimension to the feature origin too. Here we need to select the vertex point using Quick Pick as shown. Remember that the position of the feature origin can be changed in the Louvre's parameters dialog here. Louvers can also be accurately placed complete with dimensions controlling their position at the time of placement. The workflow to do this is the same as when placing holes within the synchronous part environment. First we need to lock to the face that the louver will be created on. Remember the F3 key serves as a shortcut to do this. 
So in this case, we'll use N to define the appropriate alignment edge, and then hit F3 to lock to the plane. We can then move the cursor to the edge we want the louver placed relative to, and hit either the M, C or E key on the keyboard. M will find the nearest midpoint, C will find the nearest center point, and E, which we are using in this example, will find the nearest end point. Once this is done, we can simply move the cursor away from the edge, and a dynamic dimension will appear between the hole and the edge. If desired, the orientation of the dimension may be toggled by hitting the T key on the keyboard. We could now place the louver with a left mouse click, or enter an appropriate value in the dimension field. However, if required while still in this dynamic mode, we can move to another edge and hit another shortcut key in order to have a second dimension to control the louver position. The tab key will move between the two fields to enter the precise values. Once the louver has been placed, two PMI dimensions will automatically have been created and can be used to drive its position. The dimensions are attached to the origin of the louver.